guys. So lots of requests in for the rod and reel arsenal video. I wasn't really 100% sure how I was going to approach it. I've just pulled all these rods out and sort of laid them all out. Uh, I guess we start off with why I sort of choose the reels and rods I have and why sort of they were the best choice for me. All the reels and all the rods and all that have got to take a beating. So whether it's getting through the surf or just getting dunked in the salt water, everything, it just all takes its toll and you basically ruin reels very, very quickly. When I first started, I used to use just uh, any kind of crappy spin reel. I could, I'd just like rock up to Kmart and see what was on special and I'd pick any kind of semi-decent but still very cheap reel. And uh, that was uh, not a very good game plan really long term. It, like the reels would probably last me, I don't know, a couple of months. Like if I was using them say a couple of times a week, I'd get a bit of longevity out of them because they were constantly wet and constantly being turned over. But as soon as, if you had like say two weeks off and didn't use them, it's pretty much the end of the reel. I eventually I would drill holes, I would drill holes down the bottom of them and in all the casings and just spray them full of like inox and WD-40 and get them all working again and, and then sometimes I'd break them up and lube them and just pack it so full of grease it was ridiculous. And it's just, you know, the grease would probably cost more than the reel so it was just an uphill battle for no real gains. I eventually got sick of that and I kept seeing people out on the reef uh, using um, overhead reels that seemed to be doing the job and seemed to be like very durable. Um, so the first reel that everyone was using is this tank of a reel but it's actually, it's so solid, it's the Penn Jigmaster 500 and uh, if you've ever heard one of these go, listen to this drag. If you've ever heard one of these go off, you know, when you're on the ocean and you get a big mackerel strike or something, you'll know all about it. These things are so loud and just so durable and rugged. Um, not, you know, the smoothest and uh, most classy reel you're going to see on the ocean, but they just keep going. There's no bearings. Basically, it's just bushes, so you can undo it just on this side bit here. They pull apart really quickly. Everything inside is really simple to clean and service and they just keep going. You can upgrade them as well if you go into things like Alan Tandy, I think, and a couple other sites, they'll tell you some nice upgrades you can do, and you can get them from, I think it's Scott's. Uh, I can't really remember the website, but there's a couple of upgrades you can do for them with the drag, and I think you can even get a double dog system, because that was one of the downfalls with this one. Uh, there's like this free play, and every time it locks back in, the spool does a half turn back, and so that can get a bit annoying, so it's not like an instant anti-reverse. But apart from that, these things are solid as, you can catch just about anything on them. And uh, I've caught everything from a marlin to cobia, jewfish, uh, and numerous mackerel, and they just keep going wahoo. Uh, so definitely look, look, worth a look. And that is basically what go, got me interested in pen in the first place. So then I moved on to, uh, well, I stuck with them for a while and I just pretty much avoided spin reels altogether. I started even trying to cast with these things, which uh, I wasn't very good at, but it can be done. And, and the guys that are good at casting with these things cast, like, so far. So, uh, after a while I kept seeing this one particular guy, and he had a plastic kayak, not like mine at the time. And uh, so he'd have all these rods just strapped onto the outside, and I was like, how is he, how, is he, how can he possibly make that spin reel that's strapped to the front of his plastic kayak? Uh, last so long, you know, I've seen him out here on the reef numerous times and he's still got those same spin reels I just couldn't understand how he could make them last so long. So I went and had a chat to him and uh, It turns out he was using the spin fishes uh, But not just the normal spin fishes the spin fisher V's So this was the first spin reel that I really started to uh, pay attention to and go hang on That's within my price range and basically something that can actually last on a kayak for longer than a couple of months. And the beauty of the spinfishes was, or the spinfisher V's was, they're sort of a tried and true tested design with the old spinfisher range, but it's full metal body, and the most important thing is the seals which keep it going. So the seals to seal the drag and the actual body in. And so, look, I think uh, that was definitely like sort of a turning point when it came to spin reels for me. So spinfishes and jig masters, if you're uh, looking, if you've got a budget in mind as well, like you've got to keep sort of run a tight budget, you can't go wrong with these. You'll, they'll save you a lot of money in the long run because the things will keep going. You won't have to service them too much. And definitely just an all-round kind of reel that can actually catch quite a lot on it. Okay, so 
I guess we quickly talk about rod selection as well. Most of the rods I use, especially at the beginning, were ugly sticks, just simply because they're so durable. Once again, it's a thing, you know, like on the kayak, everything gets ruined or dunked or smashed around. And you can see, I don't know if it'll show it, but all on the top of the, all the guides and all the runners, they really cop a pounding. So it's got to be something that can take a beating, that's for sure. So I basically went with uh, ugly sticks. And uh, most of the, a lot of my gear sort of, I stuck with that brand actually and just sort of maybe moved up a little bit in the range, but the ugly sticks do a really good job for me as far as I'm concerned. So I've stuck with it because they last. Like I have actually changed some of my rods recently and I'm, I'm happy with the change as well. But uh, in the beginning, I think you can't go wrong with an ugly stick just as at least a beginning, something you know is gonna, it's gonna work, okay? It's gonna catch fish and not just break in half when you uh, tap it on the side of the kayak like I have a couple of times. So we'll move on to my first overhead, we'll do overheads first and then we'll go to spin reels. So this is my go-to sort of, I guess this is a live baiting setup at the moment, but I also use these for trolling for mackerel during summer and I'll use them for just trolling around and with uh, the dead bait rigs. Uh, this is a Fathom 30 and uh, this is the two speed model, but uh, you could easily get away with the single speed. Now I like this for especially for live baiting because it's lever drag um, and typically if I'm live baiting I could be onto a bigger fish so I might switch into a low gear if I really 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 need to but generally I've got it in high gear. Um, the reason why I like uh, the lever drags for live baiting is simply because I'm using circle hooks and I want to be able to keep it really loose at the beginning and then just push it up to strike straight up and then you can't really do that with a star drag, you're slowly winding up and it might take too long to get up to the full drag and I don't have that sort of instant, you know, flexibility of instant drag with the star drags. So I've got this paired with a Ugly Sick GX2 rod. I really like these new GX2s actually, like, like, like they're harder to find actually in the stores, they've got them at BCF I think, but they're harder to find just everywhere. Everyone's got the gold series, but I do like the colours and I do like the rod, it actually performs slightly better I think. Uh, this is a 10 to 15 kilo, here yeah, I'll try and put that up there, 10 to 15 kilo rod. I think this one is 6 foot. So the 6 foot rod, it has to be under 7 foot for my kayak just simply because uh, the hatch, the centre hatch that it feeds into uh, is can only take up to a 7 foot rod I think. Maybe slightly longer but uh, I like to keep it about 7 foot and plus you don't want the rods too long on the kayak. Uh, just simply because they get in the way and you start to not being able to sort of put past lines over the back of you as well and things like that. So six foot is about right. Most of my rods are going to be about six foot. Maybe about five and a half to seven foot is the max I go. Uh, this reel is strung with a uh, 50 pound braid. I generally have most of my overhead reels strung with 50 pound, sometimes heavier on some of them, but around 50 pound is right. Like you can go a little lighter, things like mackerel and wahoo, no problems going lighter and it's more of a waiting game and just playing the fish out. Uh, same with tuna, but if you really, you know, you get a really big tuna or something special, you know, jumps on the end of the line. I don't want to be caught out with something like 30 pound. Uh, totally doable, but uh, I like the overheads because they've got the line capacity. I think I prefer to have just a little more on there just in case. I don't want to miss that sort of fish of a lifetime just because I decide to <laughs> go too light. Now, I'll be honest, this, when I got this, this was like my pride and joy, you know what I mean? I felt like I'd, I'd made it as a, uh, a fisherman. <laughs> um, just, the, just the color of it, but just also, just, it just sort of, it's basically like just a super, super jig master in a way in my mind. It was just like the star drag, the way it looks. Um, it's an American made reel, so, so it's, it's a special kind of reel for me and, and I really sort of cherish this thing. Uh, recently, I haven't been using it as much just because it's winter and I've been doing a lot more live baiting and I'd prefer the lever drag, but come summer, this thing will get a good service and this thing will be back uh, in full force. Uh, once again, it's got 50 pound on it. This is a reload rod, yeah, I'll hold that up there. It's a pen reload rod. It's a 15 to 24 kilo rod, so it's capable of pulling in a much bigger fish. Um, the difference when you catch like a tuner on this thing and a tuner on the, uh, the ugly stick, you can really feel the difference in the power of the rod. Uh, yeah, and I really I do like the reload, and also this reload is two piece, but it joins from the it's from this the butt is only the second piece, so I can actually take it like I took it to Hawaii and caught some GTs on it, and it definitely performs. It's you know it performs really well, so it's a good rod to have, and I can travel around with it a bit more, so it's a bit more portable. See, even though the spin reels are getting 
to a point where they're, you know, you could easily use spin reels only, especially now that they're so sealed. Uh, I still like the overheads just simply because when you're out there trolling and you get like a really big fish, sometimes the spin reels just don't have the line capacity that these things do. So the conventionals and the overheads oh, really, really, really bring it home. When it comes to line capacity, you can't beat them. And seriously, like, if you get a big wahoo, if you see that first run and it strips out, like I've seen them strip it down to almost an empty spool, and that's uh, probably like a good 400, 350 to 400 meters of braid, gone in like seconds. It's a pretty impressive sight, but you don't want to be caught out with like a spin reel. And then once the spin reels get a big enough to sort of take enough line, all of a sudden you're dealing with a spin reel that's you know huge and it doesn't fit in the kayak hatch very well. So overheads, keep it nice and slim, easy to fit in the hatch, and cap the line capacity, so they're definitely the way to go, I think, especially for trolling when you're going for something bigger, bigger wahoo, bigger mackerel, and you know, bigger tuna, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, my pride and joy has been scratched up a bit. You can see all the scratches here, just because just in the hatch of the kayak, it gets smashed against, there's a couple of bolts that line the inside of the hatch, and unfortunately, um, I've covered them up now a little bit, but unfortunately, by the time I noticed how much it was scratching all my reels, it would, the damage was done, but, the Pen Talk 30, it's my special reel, yeah, the I made it reel, <laughs> and I'm, I'm taking it seriously real. <laughs> but uh, I really do love the Star Drags, I actually prefer Star Drags, especially for trolling and just the simplicity of them. And this thing actually breaks down almost as easy as a Jigmaster, it's really surprising once you open it up, it's really simple, really durable. Uh, but just such a classy, like, show. <laughs> okay, then we move on to the spin reels, alright. So it's pretty much so. Previously, it was the spin fishes that sort of got me into it, but uh, and I then I like last year I did try a clash, the pen clash, and I think it was a four thousand reel, and it was doing a great job, super like a super light reel, perfect for casting all day, um, perfect if you're in the boat. But what I found is once again, um, it was a tough ask for it to last too long on the kayak because it was constantly getting wet, constantly getting dunked, and even in in the uh, the Clash series, all that you know, all of here is cut open just to make it as light and uh, as as light as possible. And unfortunately, I think those all the cutouts and all the space there is part of its downfall because just so much water can get into it. It's certainly not a fault of the reel. It's more just I'm just too harsh on these things. And so the Clash, unfortunately, wasn't the reel for the kayak. But what is definitely the reel is the new Slammer Three. So I'm sure if you've been into the Ducks of the Pen range or sealed reels and sealed reels at an affordable price, you must have sort of probably, you've probably come across the Slammer 3 by now. It's been out for a while, over a year. Uh, this, this reel is just like, it's a tank. It's, it's lighter than the Spin Fisher. It's more sealed than the Spin Fisher. The drag, it's got Dura drag, so it's got better drag than the Spin Fisher V. Um, it's got the big knob handle, which actually is a really cool thing. Like I, now that I, when I go back to the smaller reels or the smaller, uh, smaller knobs I'm like oh come on this is this is a toy so um, everything about this reel is like that step up and even from the clash like the clash had like the new CNC cut gears and things like that so this also has all of that uh, and so the price jump I think what's the price of the spin fishes is about maybe about 200 uh, recommended retail so you might be able to find it a bit cheaper but the slammer comes in at about 360 as a starting sort of recommended retail price. So for the price, you're gonna be hard pressed coming up with something that has as much drag, is as durable, is as light, like it's actually quite a light setup compared to a lot of other reels. Uh, everything about it sort of ticks all the boxes. And the fact that it's got an IPX6 water rating, so it's basically completely sealed. It's just like, you could take, you can take it, dunk it, wind it underwater and it's, it's fine. So, and I've definitely done that on numerous occasions in the kayak. So, and, and not, not one of them have I serviced yet. It'll be interesting to see what happens when I pull one apart and see, you know, the kind of uh, beating it's taken and if it actually has let any water in. But everything I've read and everything I can feel, like I've been winding these things like crazy. They, they get dunked so much and they feel as smooth as the day I got them. They basically impressed me so much that I've changed my whole range. I used to have all spin fishes in my spin reels. So from about a 3,500 size up to a 6,500 I used to go. But now, because this has more drag pressure as well than the spin fisher range, I've actually gone down to a 550. Slightly less line capacity, but pretty much about the same. 
um, and as much as a spinfish here. So this is the biggest in the range. This is the first one I got. This is the 5500 Slammer 3. I've been using this for a while now. It's caught quite a few fish, everything from sharks, tuna, cobia the other day and it's handled it no problems, you know, and once you crank that drag up you can put heaps of drag pressure on them. So definitely worth a look and still not blowing the budget. I think if you can get a comparable reel, you know, from another brand, I think to get a proper seal reel, you definitely start at at least the price these are and it goes up from there before you're starting to talk for like real sealed. So I think the slammer is definitely my go-to spin reel until they come out with something better. I did notice there was a high speed coming out, which hopefully I can get my hands on by the end of the year. But uh, generally the same reel, just red, which is cool, and faster winding in, so good for casting. I think uh, maybe good from the rocks. But um, yeah, slammer, I'd definitely rate the slammer if you're keen on looking at a sort of a seal reel for the kayak. There we get that Ocean Assassin's Archipelago Rog. Uh, I think this was 2 to 5 PE, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty much sure that's right. Uh, I'll put the specs up if it's wrong and uh, maybe clarify that. Oh, here we go. It is... It was written there, but it's actually... Yeah, once again, it's the kayak. The tough kayak uh, has scraped off where it actually says it. But I don't know if you can get the deets there. Maybe you can read them. But anyway, yeah, it's a, the rods are... It's a jigging rod, but definitely built to take just about any big fish on. There's not much you couldn't catch with this rod. Guess I've got to be careful of high sticking, but even if I ever have lifted it up too high, it's never felt like I was in danger of sort of snapping it. So definitely rate that rod. It's definitely got a really nice feel to it. It's really nice and light, nice thin rod. Uh, definitely not all bulky and, you know, I like my rods now to feel like they've got a little bit of finesse to it. So it definitely fits the bill. The 5,500 I've got strung with uh, 30 pounds of blue camo spider wire braid. And then we move on to the smaller slammer. So the 5,500 slammers worked out so well that I basically went to a, went and just like decked out my whole range. Like I got rid of all my spin fishes or just moved them aside and I've moved to slammer threes for all my spin reels now just because they still feel so good. This one. This thing is like a little demon of a reel. Like, this is the 3,500, and I've used this for snapper season this year. And uh, even when it wasn't catching snapper, I've caught long tails on it. Caught a decent long tail. I've caught uh, cobia on it. I've also caught numerous reef sharks. Um, and it's handled it so well. At no point has it really struggled. Um, I think this has got like 30 pounds of drag, so it's a lot of drag for a little reel. And you know, I've tightened right up on things and it's just handled it no problem. So if line capacity is not an issue, then, you know, the 3,500, that's just, I think, as small as the slam has come, that's a pretty damn good reel. You could, you could use it for just about anything if line capacity is not the issue. If line capacity is your issue, then you're going to have to go bigger. Uh, that's got a ugly stick rod on it. This is an ugly stick platinum rod. And this is a 5 to 8 kilo rod. And that 5 to 8 kilo rod, being an ugly stick, also handled like like a pretty big, like maybe, maybe let's call it a metre and a half to almost two metre reef shark. <laughs> or two metre reef shark's a bit big, but you know, metre and a half reef shark. And it handled it pretty well. At no time did it feel like it was going to break or snap. And it was buckled right over. And those things, you know, they so it's like sharks and cobia really pull hard and it still handled it. So sort of part of the, the uh, appeal with the ugly sticks they just keep going and you know you never really you don't have any like f you don't never lose faith in their ability to sort of just take the punishment what is this it's a lighter action rod at the top but it still has enough boosting power to pull a bigger fish in you do feel sometimes like you know you your lines sort of you, you're too bouncy when you're sort of trying to trying to bring something in but you know I've got to play play the game of sort of having like a, this is a more it's more of a snapper setup but uh, I still need it to be able to handle a big fish every now and then if it's sort of, and, and, and a bigger snapper as well. Like, you know, with that amount of drag, I should be able to pull a big snapper in. You know, you still could get me to the rocks unless I sort of go a bit heavier, but there's still the potential to get him in. But, yeah, 
Definitely has handled some big fish. So it'll be interesting to see if I get, say, maybe an 80-plus snapper on it, how it goes then. Or, But, you know, with any setup, you still, you know, after that first run, you still always, it's always a bit of a dicey game. You know, a big fish like that can take you down just about no matter how heavy you're going on it. Uh, I also like to get the coloured braid, the pen coloured braid, on a lot of my snapper reels. So this actually had a top. I think in the last video I actually lost the top of the uh, coloured braid. And so that's why the spool's looking a little empty as well. But I had that topped off with, uh, you know, like maybe, I think it may be 50 to 100 metres of the coloured braid, which changes colour in uh, increments. So I know exactly how deep I am. And then I know which colour I have to pay real attention to when it's getting down the bottom. And it's sort of action time, depending on where the fish are in the water column. So that's just about it, actually. So they're, they're my go-tos for offshore, you know. Like, I think uh, inshore, I'd be, I'm going to hopefully be sort of decking myself out with a bit more inshore gear with the, once the skiff gets here and I'll be doing a bit more inshore work. Uh, and in that case, I'll be able to sort of go away from all the sealed stuff and maybe, you know, some, use uh, some lighter gear and something with just, you know what I mean? Like, I think hopefully the Conflict 2 will sort of fit the bill there and hopefully I'll get my hands on one of them soon. Um, yeah, so I guess the main thing you've got to consider with the offshore kayaking is just something that's durable and something that can take punishment. So if uh, you're not, you know, a millionaire, then hopefully like some of the gear that I use might fit the bill, I think. Uh, not ridiculously expensive. They're setups that, is, that are affordable and achievable, you know, if you, if you don't have the help of sponsors and things like that. I've always sort of, like, I've always used this kind of setup and then even now that I've got support from people, I still use the stuff that I really, you know, I really sort of enjoyed using at the beginning. I guess the gear, you know, is slowly getting a bit, you know, a bit classier and a bit nicer. Like the slammers aren't a cheap reel by, by a long shot, but they're definitely, you know, in that price range where it's still affordable for most people to go out and if they save their money, they can get one and they can be fishing with something that's gonna, gonna sort of compare to some of the really expensive gear that some people are using. So. Uh, yeah, have a look at it and consider it and uh, go through the videos and see if you know some of it fits your bill and maybe you can sort of get something out of it. Hopefully you get something out of it and uh, sort of helps you sort of match a couple of things that might suit the kind of fishing you're doing. Put some questions in down, down below under this one. I think this is going to, be, going to be a topic that typically could get a lot of questions and I'm more than happy to go through it and answer all of them. Um, Anything from you know real choice, line choice. Uh, I won't go through how I actually rig up a lot of them. I think that's another video. It's too big a topic. You know how you know what I'm actually fishing with, and and uh, I'll go through through that in another video, and then we'll we'll just slowly burn through all of these videos, all the gear videos. Let me know if you uh, enjoy the the gear videos and you want me to sort of tackle a particular gear topic. I don't know anything I use. I know I've got requests for a couple of things like PFDs is definitely one that I'm sort of going to hit. Uh, another thing I mentioned, I think one of the goals in this Patreon thing, and thanks everyone that jumped on board for that, I can't believe, thank, huge thanks for people that pledged, and I'm going to get through the, the shout outs, I've just got to send everyone emails and figure out exactly how I'm going to do these shout outs and make it work for everyone, because uh, I don't think I asked enough, in, I didn't think I asked for enough info to start them properly, so I'll send out emails about that, but uh, one of the goals I think in that was to sort of hit the 500 mark and then I would do like a live stream say every weekend I could do a live stream with some of the gear that I use um, so if someone had like say if I start a live stream and I just say oh reels is going to be the topic today we could start talking about the reels and then if you've got questions you can log on live and ask me direct questions I can answer them face to face in a way or I can sort of then put it up as a as a video then it can stay as like I'll put it in a, like a live streams gear video sort of playlist and then everyone can sort of ask questions as it goes and then it'll still be a reference because it'll just go on to, as a normal video would be it'll just turn into like as a normal uploaded video and then people can reference that as well uh, it might be a good way to do it uh, that way it's sort of easy I don't have to go through the whole editing process we just get instant answers we get we get more answers because people can ask directly or can ask questions directly and um, could be a good way to do it so I don't know check check out uh, or just stay tuned I think that'll be coming whether I get to the uh, the goal I think it was 500 goal or not I think I might just introduce that because now that I'm sitting here doing this one it makes me realize that it'd be easier if I was just doing it live and then if I saw questions sort of popping up I could actually answer them directly and run off to the garage and grab something and and sort of answer it properly rather than sort of trying to cover things and not knowing where I'm going with it and not knowing if I'm answering the right question so uh, something to consider I think uh, I'll work on that and figure out a good way to do it and see if I can sort of get my head around live streaming <laughs> 
seems uh, seems daunting, but I guess it's no different from me sitting in front of the camera now, just like I am. So uh, we will we will get to that, I think. So anyway, yep, let me know what you think. Any questions, fire them off. I'll answer them in the comments or uh, do another video if you've got other requests. So yeah, stay tuned. Next video is uh, her, ooh, I think um, Timmy and Andy's video should go up this week or the beginning of next week by the time this one's up. I think I might try and get this one done by tomorrow. So check out Tim and Andy's video on, I think maybe Tuesday they'll have it scheduled in. I'm not 100% sure, but keep an eye out for it. I'm sure everyone will be sort of looking forward to that. I know everyone sort of enjoys all their videos, so it'll be good to see a collab. Anyway, I went fishing with Andy the week after. I'll have my video with Andy up. So uh, hopefully give him likes, give him thumbs up, watch him, and then come and watch mine and Andy's after that. There's a lot of, lot of talking in this one, so hopefully Hopefully you can stomach it. Anyway, wrapping it up. Uh, I'll see you next video. Yeah. <laughs>